How we doing folks, your host Moose here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we welcome you back for our Season 3, Week 6 around the NCAA recap show, Panther Nation welcome, and your Panthers coming off the backs of a 38-27 loss to the Louisville Cardinal. In spite of that, the lights are still bright in the Steel City as the Panthers pulled in 7, you heard me right, 7 four-star recruits off the backs of that performance against Louisville. It was still a good showing for the Panthers, not the result they wanted, but definitely the result they wanted as far as Pat Narduzzi is concerned in the recruiting books. And we'll take a look at those guys that the Panthers brought in. Of course, first and foremost is Bo Goff, six foot, 396 pound running back out of Van Wert, Ohio. The Panthers had to help hold off Florida State and West Virginia to get him to early commit here. Looks like an okay player. Good speed, not great acceleration. For a guy that's got to put on a little bit more weight, his elusiveness isn't great. He's more of a project, somebody that hopefully can develop over time, uh, but he's going to be somebody the Panthers will hopefully count. Now, this guy is not a project. Lamar Davis, center for the Panthers, uh, a run blocker, committed to the Panthers. There's no question he was going anywhere else, and he looks fantastic. Great run blocking ability. He's a guy that he could get into the lineup right away. The Panthers have another young center already, John Cooper, waiting in the wings for their senior center to leave. But Davis is a guy that you might not be able to hold off the field. He's that good. Lonnie Jackson, not as you know, not as well renowned. He's a four-star, good, solid pass blocker. Came in highly regarded. Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, all were after him. But upon scouting, loses eight overall points. So you know he's a very good pass blocker, but the rest of his blocking skills need a lot of work. He's someone that's going to be a project and will have to improve before he's ever going to see the field. But he's got a good pedigree, so he could have, you know, be one for the future. Justin Walden, four-star quarterback from Horsham, PA. Again, Penn State, West Virginia, two local rivals for the Panthers were coming in for him, but the Panthers dominating the state, as Penn State would like to say, pick up Walden, the four-star quarterback, and he's another bust. He was projected as a 76. The Panthers thought they might have found a gem. Good speed, 83 running, but his passing ability is just not great. 75 throw power, 71 accurate. He's going to be a good depth quarterback, provides that pipeline into PA, could maybe be used in an option type game, but he just definitely has to improve uh, as a passer if he's going to see the field for the Panthers. Louis Hills, good solid pass rusher, four-star defensive end from Maine. The Panthers love finding defensive ends from Maine. You'll remember Malachi Bordeaux uh, coming out of Maine as well. Uh, so the Panthers just love finding players from that area of the country. And this guy looks very, very solid. Uh, good power moves. His block shedding is very solid. Really good in pursuit. Decent speed with good acceleration. So he's a guy that give him a year or two and he'll definitely be factoring his way into the starting lineup. There's no doubt about that. The Panthers locking up a ton of good edge rushers in the last couple of recruiting classes. they got Sean Wolfgang, Ronnie Baker, Malachi Bordeaux, now Louis Hills. Uh, Drew Holland, 79 overall strong safety. Uh, Wyoming was actually the closest team in for the four-star safety from Bel Air, Florida. Good, solid player, compact, has a lot of strength in his body. And if you look at him, he's fast, 89 overall for a safety, a good jumper, uh, really good in pursuit, strong in zone coverage, really, really good in press. So it's interesting to see that. His press coverage is unbelievable. So he could maybe be somebody, especially with his good tackling, decent speed, that could be used in a slot corner role as early as next year, uh, especially with the Panthers potentially losing senior Philip B. Motley. Uh, Holland, definitely a guy that could slot into the lineup very early on. Their final commit, Charles Rhodes, the guard uh, out of Forestville, Ohio. 74 overall, good solid player. Uh, Proficient both pass blocking and run blocking for the Panthers. They fought off a couple Florida schools uh, as well as North Carolina and Georgia to bring in the four-star guard from Forestville, Ohio. So overall, some very solid signs for the Panthers. You can see there was even some other players that we were in for that we weren't able to bring in. Um, but overall, some good talent. I mean, a very diverse class, a lot of different positions, quarterback, halfback, uh, a safety, defensive end, a guard, a tackle, a center. So, I mean, three players across the offensive line, 
three uh, different defensive positions, or excuse me, two different defensive positions, plus a quarterback and a tailback. Now, they didn't all grade out as great as you'd expect. The three best players we actually got, or two of the best players we got, were the offensive linemen, and then, of course, the safety, Drew Holland. So, some good players, players that definitely have a future in the Panther lineup. Let us know what you think of the recruits, how you think the Panthers are doing, and, of course, we'll let you know as any further recruiting news happens throughout the season. I like to keep you guys informed on that as things go. We kind of showed you the recruiting board before. We show you the commits as they come in, and we'll keep you posted on that. But in spite of the Panthers, you know, tough week losing to Louisville, that was a bright spot. For other teams in the ACC, they did have their own bright spots. NC State goes to 5-0 with a drubbing of Duke, 38-19. Virginia goes to 4-2 with a 24-14 over struggling Syracuse. Game of the week, actually, in the NCAA turned out to be a great one. Virginia Tech, 31-28 over Miami. Clemson blows out North Carolina, 35-6. Maryland with the upset of the week, 33-29, knocks off Florida State. Going to knock Florida State from the ranks of the unbeatens. They're surely going to fall out of the top 10 with that loss. And Georgia Tech, 21-16, holds off Wake Forest to go to 3-1. In the top 25, not a lot of marquee matchups. Arkansas State did beat Arkansas to stay unbeaten and continue their magical run. Uh, Auburn won, Florida won. Uh, Tennessee, 33-14 over Georgia. Kind of one of your big uh, other ranked matchups. Texas just escaped Cal. Stanford blows out Colorado. Houston knocks off USF as well. Players of the week in this week, Joe, jo Joe Juan Williams uh, in a 37-17 victory over Mizzou. The Vandy corner had two picks. And Poppy White, an unbelievable name, almost 200 yards of total offense and five touchdowns in a 49-28 victory for Ohio over Eastern Michigan, great performance by him. In the ACC, you hate to see that, but Lamar Jackson, 335 yards through the air, five total touchdowns, four passing, one rushing, shredded the Panthers' defense, and basically single-handedly led Louisville to a victory. Adonis Alexander for Virginia Tech in their victory over Miami, forced a fumble and had a pick. Good, solid performance for the senior quarterback, so a couple of strong performances. Lamar Jackson surely had to stake his claim back into the Heisman race, but there's a ton of you know really impressive candidates this year year in that Heisman race, none other than Deshaun Kaiser uh, and Darius Geis, the halfback from LSU, leading the way. He actually jumped up to number one with a 131-yard performance in, against an FCS school. Kaiser had an FCS game of his own, two touchdowns, didn't really have to do much, uh, but he's still, I think, a favorite for this one. Rosen with another huge day, or excuse me, Rosen had the week off, uh, so he stays stagnant in week three, or in third place, I should say here. Barkley stays stagnant in fourth place, as Penn State didn't play either. Uh, his last game was two touchdowns in a victory over Iowa. And then Jamar Smith from LSU, four touchdown passing performance, somehow leapfrogs him, uh, the redshirt junior quarterback, into the Heisman race in spite of you know over Lamar Jackson, which I find pretty crazy. But we'll see how things go for Louisville the rest of the season. I don't think that's the last we've heard of Lamar. In the coaches poll, Notre Dame still sitting number one. LSU does jump up to number two with the Florida State loss. They actually leapfrog Ohio State, who was off this week. Washington's up to four, UCLA up to five, so big Pac-12 game coming up here in the future. Texas falls to six, Clemson up to seven, Bama eight, Oklahoma nine after their uh, bye week, but remaining undefeated, they actually jumped nine spots. Virginia Tech up to 10, Georgia falls to 11 with their loss to Tennessee, Florida State all the way back to 14 with their loss. Louisville actually jumps up to 12 with their victory over the Panthers, who fall back to number 20. So a lot of movers and shakers this week. Tennessee up six, Stanford up four, Arkansas State up six spots sitting at three and oh still the Panthers fall three spots down to number 20 so you can see a lot of teams moving around Auburn into the top 25 this week teams just moving around left and right as they try and stake their claim for a BCS bowl bid as well as potentially a national title for those teams with you know zero or one losses still remaining this season and you can see Oklahoma State out of the polls USF and Arkansas also out of the polls with their losses last week week now coming into this week some huge games we just talked about so many people moving and shaking in the top 25 and none other than texas versus ou the red river rivalry will start off this week a huge set of matchups penn state goes to nebraska nebraska very strong four and one right now taking on the four and one nittany lions uh herb street likes penn state in that matchup i do as well with you know barkley mcsorley just so much offensive talent you don't expect nebraska to stop them va tech they come off a win versus miami you know they're now gonna have to take on a surprise 
Rising Georgia Tech team. We know what they can do. They have a great rush offense, even though Lane Kiffin's now their coach, uh, but they still have that rushing ability that could surprise some teams. Cincinnati takes on unbeaten Houston. This is a group of five matchup, but a big one nonetheless. Unbeaten Houston versus four and one Cincy. Tennessee coming off their big win. Uh, Last week over Georgia, now has to take on Arkansas State, see if they can knock them from the ranks of the unbeaten, finally knock off that Cinderella story. And then big, big game, Louisville-Clemson. This is the battle for the ACC Atlantic. Of course, Clemson was upset earlier this season by Miami already, but if they can come out with a victory over Louisville, they'll restake their claim as the favorites for the Atlantic Division. If Louisville wins, I think they're the runaway favorites. There's no question about it. Notre Dame unbeaten takes on Florida State, who picked up their first loss in an upset last Last week to Maryland, they're going to try and bounce back and knock off the Fighting Irish, who are looking to pull in a, a national title real contention at this point. Ohio State 4-0 takes on 4-1 Illinois, who's been surprising with their record, but I think their performance really indicates that Ohio State should waltz through this one, no problem. Cal 4-1 taking on UCLA. Josh Rosen has been unbelievable, leading the number one pass offense in the country. We expect him to do more of the same against a 100th ranked in the country. Cal pass defense, so I'd expect UCLA to put up some big point totals in that one. And finally, your Pitt Panthers taking on 3-1 and one Boston College. The Eagles have looked good. They have an unbelievable offense, eighth-ranked offense in the country right now, number four-ranked pass offense for the Eagles, and a solid defense as well. So I think they pose some serious problems for the Panthers. They have a mobile quarterback similar to a Lamar Jackson, but not necessarily as talented. And the Panthers have struggled with a quarterback that can be dual threat in the past. So that's going to be something they're really going to have to look out for. If we look at how Boston College has done this season, a tight victory over Army, 34-27 to open the year. Then they blew out Buffalo, blew out New Mexico State. So a couple easy ones there before losing away at Miami, which is, of course, you know, a very tough place to play, but the Hurricanes did win 41 to 14 in that one over the Eagles. So they've been very inconsistent. A couple of big blowout wins, but a blowout loss as well. So it depends, you know, what BC team will come out. You got to think under the lights, national television taking on the Panthers. You'd expect to see a big game out of them. And with Wade under center, it's definitely something they can do. He's averaging nearly 300 yards a game passing, 13 touchdowns in just four games to one interception. That's an unbelievable ratio, and he's going to be fantastic. Somebody the Panthers will have to watch for and they have the rushing attack too. Bass, no slouch himself, 91 yards per game rushing. Robinson's averaging 134 yards receiving a game, so this is an explosive offensive attack for the Eagles. For the Panthers, they've just kind of managed the game. The rushing attack has been what's really dominated games for them. Kenny Pickett, he's averaging just a shade under 200 yards a game, five touchdowns, two picks. Uh, Quadri Olsen's led the way with five touchdowns on the ground and nearly 100 yards per game, but of course they have Darren Hall who can provide that same level of ability running the football and Pickett can scramble himself when need be. If we look at this BC lineup though, where they're really going to make their bread and butter is offensively through the air. They got two fantastic receivers in Walker and Smith and with Darius Wade threading them the ball, look at him, he's got 85 speed, he's a very good running quarterback as well. But his stats right now are unbelievable. One of the best quarterbacks in the country at this point. 13 touchdowns. Nearly, like I said, 300 yards a game. 281.5 per game. His passing rating is over 200, which is just an unbelievable stat line right now uh, for the redshirt senior quarterback. And he is our one to watch in this game. If the Panthers can shut him down, can take away his ability to find his receivers, then they'll have a much better chance of coming away with the victory because you know bass is the bc running back that'll be you know taking the carries and he is not great he's got okay speed but overall talent wise he's just not not a superstar but they got sweeney receiving the ball a couple of really good receivers so the panthers will have a lot to contend with through the air for the likes of dane jackson demar hamlin phil b motley uh paris ford dennis briggs those corners and safeties are going to have a lot to contend with zach allen very talented player of course uh that the panthers will have to stop on the left side of their line he's a guy that can create a lot of havoc up front defensively middle of the middle of the field is somewhere the panthers could hopefully attack lucas dennis is a solid corner that'll hope to shut down the likes of maurice french rafael Rujo lobe so you can see BC just a solid lineup. There's no doubt about that. They have a lot of good players, some really good talent. Uh, 
receiving the ball and throwing the ball, and that could be where the game could be won or lost for the Panthers. So let us know in the comments what you think is going to happen in the Panthers matchup. They head to Chestnut Hill to take on the Boston College Eagles. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win, what's going to be the final score, what you think of the Panthers signings, who's going to make a big impact in the future. As always, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hail to Pitt. We'll see you soon. Take care.